Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of Definitive Discussion where I bring on phenomenal individuals from all over the place on the internet, different corners of the gaming industry, and deep dive into a variety of different topics. I hope you guys have been enjoying the last couple of episodes I've posted up on the channel. There's been a lot of great guests, a lot of great topics we've been discussing, a lot of good game talk as well, a lot of a bunch of uh, cool stuff. So let me know in the comments section down below if you guys have been enjoying that. Obviously, like the videos, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and don't forget I have the Patreon. Remember, at the dollar level or higher, you guys get a bunch of exclusive content, including the EX mode that I show you guys that where we kind of deep dive into a little bit more into some of the episodes with some of our guests, and we talk about a bunch of additional stuff exclusively on Patreon. Check that out. There's links in the description box below. But today, I got a brand new guest. I got Leon Robertson. Okay, He's a video producer. He's done work for Digino Gaming. He's done stuff for Unseen 64. He's a freelance writer. He's doing a lot of stuff, and he's on Twitter a lot, too. So, Leon, <laughs> it's, it's finally dope to chat with you i mean well, hi good <laughs> how you been um i'm i'm doing pretty good how are you oh uh, so far so good i'm over here chilling making making video content talking about games and stuff you've been talking a lot about games too you, you're on twitter a lot usually i see you yeah yeah maybe too much to be honest <laughs> too much uh, uh, yeah i i should i should be working a bit more but uh but there you go happy to be on talking to you Awesome. Appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about what you've been up to lately besides being on social media too damn much. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of gaming talk, you know, a lot of good, big, big things happening in gaming real soon. I mean, obviously, with all of your different content you put out there and stuff you get involved with, I mean, are you excited? Because, I mean, there's there's some big games coming out in the next couple of months that people are going to lose their minds about. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Doom Eternal. Uh, it's a big one for me. And uh, Animal Crossing, of course. I'm I'm kind of torn between the two because they come out on the same day. Yeah. So I'm I'm currently navigating that and uh, trying to decide which one. It's looking like it is going to be Animal Crossing first. Be yeah. Of just like peer pressure. That's what I, all my other friends are playing. So. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask too that you know in in situations like that I mean with me I usually just get to certain games when I get to them because I don't think like you need mm -hmm. to rush to get to certain games like there's some games that i love like absolutely love that i played madly after everybody else like maybe months after they initially came out like do you find yourself doing that sometimes especially for like big big titles i mean besides the ones you're obviously going to pick up on mm -hmm. yeah definitely um like i never really played near automata and i'm playing that right now yeah. uh that's a yeah, that's a game that I, I missed out on because I didn't own a PS4 when it uh, came out, and it I, I later bought it when they they ported it to the, the Xbox. Nice. So I've been, I've been playing on the Xbox for the first time. Um, well, I actually played through the the first story last year, and now I'm doing Nine S's story this year, Brilliant. and I, I quite like it. But 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 with Animal Crossing, you know, that's something that is more kind of socially driven. So you want to be there day one when everyone else is in the game, you know, trading items, building up your town. So you are you're on this. You want to be on the same like level playing field as everyone else. You don't want to fall behind. You want to get you want to get in while it's hot. I think with Animal Crossing. Very very true, and not just Animal Crossing. A lot of other games as well. Fun fact. I wrote the guide for Nero Automata on IGN. You should use that. If you ever get lost in that game, you <laughs> I got a bunch of like video guides and stuff you could do and whatnot. Get a whole bunch that, of secrets. <laughs> Be cool. That's cool. That's cool, yeah. yeah but that um, was like uh, mad, that was like mad long ago though. That, like that was like during release. Yeah. When did that come out? Like twenty seventeen or something. It's about two years ago or two or three years ago now at this point, I think. Because yeah. I know for me, Near Automata was the game I felt like I snubbed at the at the game awards because I felt like it should have been on there. Cause it because again I had that much fun with it while I was doing that guide and stuff. But again, it's been a minute. People people want some more Yokotaro. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like the, the worlds of it a lot and the story is excellent. I, I, I dig anything with these kind of, uh, you know, machine consciousness themes. I think that's interesting. But uh, I, I've got to say the combat for me is not as good as some of the other Platinum Games titles like Bayonetta or The Wonderful 101. It's a bit simplistic for me. 
it's speaking of which, you know, since you mentioned Bayonetta, because Bayonetta obviously not too long ago had a re-release, you know, on PS4 for its 10th anniversary, along with Vanquish from Sega. Right. I mean, how do you feel about a lot of these re-releases? Because obviously with some of the work that you've done, obviously with Digino Gaming on C64, you guys talk a lot about, you know, retro games or games, you know, of the past for one reason or another. I mean, how do you feel about a lot of these classic games or a lot of these various different titles getting remastered or re-released, you know, on current gen hardware? Yeah. It's great, you know. I think that's the future. I, I absolutely am down for that type of thing. I don't know if I'll buy the re-release of Bayonetta because I already own like several copies of it already. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I I wish they'd re-release some of the older, more obscure titles Platinum has done, like Anarchy Reigns and Mad Worlds. Those are two which I think Sega published those. And they didn't do a terribly good job of marketing them. Mad World was not that successful, but I, I feel like you could totally re-release those on the on the Switch or something in HD. Uh, well, well, I guess um, Anarchy Reigns was in HD, but you know, a slight remaster, especially of Mad World, would be great. And uh, yeah, like a touch up, yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's just. It's good to keep these great games, you know, going back to them and giving a bit of polish and allowing new audiences to try them. I think that's a great thing. And, it, you know, it's just like how they do with films, right? How uh, you, every time there's a new format like Blu-ray or 4K Blu-ray comes out, that gets remastered and re-released again to make make a bit more money. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad we do that. It's, it's good for preservation. I agree. I, I think it's very cool. And, you know, it's funny that you mentioned those Platinum games or specifically those Sega published games because I wouldn't put it past them to do something like that, especially for those really obscure titles. I mean, I'm surprised even now, you know, because very soon, more than likely, we're going to get No More Heroes 3. I wouldn't be surprised if we start to see, like, a collection for, like, No More Heroes 1 and 2 for the Nintendo Switch because I know those games didn't mm -hmm. always rely on the motion controls and stuff, but, like, seeing a lot of those titles, you know, in different ways kind of come, not come back, but, like, just be released on, like, either online, digitally, and in some way so more people could play those especially if there's newer entries coming out to me that's very cool yeah i think suda does want to do that and I, i'm not actually sure if it is something that's greenlit yet or not but i know he has absolutely been pushing for that and i think he's said a few times yeah i am like talking to people about uh re-releasing no More heroes one and two and they really should because i feel like that is a game that if you if you don't re-release the old two, the previous two, on new hardware, then I don't think No More Heroes 3 will be as successful as it could be. You know, it won't reach its full potential. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who would like No More Heroes 1 and 2, but didn't play them. Uh, for me, I, I, I love No More Heroes 1, but I, I literally could never find a copy of No More Heroes 2. Oh, man. Uh, during the Wii year anyway, like I remember a couple of years ago I, I saw like a second hand copy in a, a second hand shop, but but other than that, uh that game, No More Heroes 2, I don't think it had a very like wide release. So I never came across a copy of it and I'd love to play it because I've never played it before. You really should, honestly. I think personally for me, you know, again as a fan of that series, I think No More Heroes 2 is the better game because I feel like one of the biggest issues I had with No More Heroes 1, and this was even in the re-release that they did on PS3 later on. Again, I forgot the specific name of that edition, but it was like basically the same game with like a little bit of touch-ups to like the controls and the visuals and stuff, mm. where they had those like open world type of sections where you're like driving Travis's bike. Or like that big machine that he drives around the city and stuff. And yeah. I, I was never a fan of those. I was always much more of a fan of the combat. So I liked like, even though it was a very basic, the the menus where you could just go from location to location and do the different missions in No More Heroes 2. But it was still essentially like the same series, like some of the same quirks and tropes that you got from the first game. It just got rid of those sections that I just wasn't a big fan of. But you should, you definitely need to track it down some way whenever you can. You, you get a yeah. kick out of it. Yeah, I, I love No More Heroes, and I, I agree, the first one has tons of blow to it, loads of padding where you want to go and kill the next assassin, but you have to go and do like a dumb mini game, or you those have to like jobs. drive around. I hated those yeah. jobs, dude. <laughs> yeah, you gotta go around the town and do some inane bullshit, it's, it, yeah, it's not the most fun part of that game. 
You know, it's funny that we mentioned that too, because how do you feel about remakes though? Because obviously we've had some big remakes and we're getting a big one very soon in the next couple months with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I feel like No More Heroes 1 is one of those games that I feel like could get a, a remake that would actually do very well now these days. Because, I mean, again, mm. we've had others like, you know, uh, what is it, The Legend of Zelda not too long ago, you know, Link's Awakening, which was a big deal. Obviously, we're getting Final Fantasy VII Remake. We had Resident Evil 2 Remake, which now we're getting Resident Evil 3 Remake. A lot of these big games that are just just getting reimagined in some way i mean is this a great thing to you is this like a mad thing to you because i mean for me the results are pretty awesome yeah i i'm a fan of that you know there's not too many that i've patronized uh, uh myself but i i like the idea of it in general the final fantasy 7 remake looks cool and I, th I feel like some of those games Maybe if Final Fantasy VII, I haven't played for years, but I don't imagine that would hold up that well. Like it is, it has aged quite a bit. Um, so I, I feel like with some of those games, a full on remake might be necessary. I, I've always kind of wanted to see a remake of Sonic Adventure, the first one. Me too. Because, because that's like full of cool stuff that I like. I, I like the story and the characters and everything, but there's a bunch of stuff in it that hasn't aged well. It's buggy. It's not the game that we remember it being, really. Yeah, I, and, and I was always one of those people that really was down on Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 because I always felt it was overhyped. But I could totally see like Sega going back and like, okay, let's reimagine Sonic Adventure. We probably won't call it like Sonic Adventure 3 or anything or like continue that series, but just like go back and retitle it and reimagine it in that same vein with that same like uh, spirit to it in some way. Where a lot of the crazy crappy aspects about it, like again, some of the, the camera stuff in that game and the other things that <laughs> bugged me, you know, as, as a player uh -huh. back then, you know, will get addressed in some way. But like, you know, being applicable to like more of the modern Sonic games like Sonic Colors or like Sonic Generations type of stuff. Yeah, we're, we're talking about Sonic as like a whole of a kettle of fish because oh God, yeah. if you even like consider the idea of doing a remake of Sonic Adventure, I, I I I think you really do run the risk of it being worse than the original because I'm not sure I'm not sure if the current Sonic team is up to doing that because they've not done a good Sonic game in about ten years now. Like, when was the last one? Like, Sonic Generations? Mania. Sonic Mania. I mean, from that team, though, it, again, it wouldn't be Sonic Mania. I would say Sonic Generations, maybe Sonic uh, Colors. You know, because some people like yeah. that game. Yeah, I, I would say it's Generations for me. Uh, Generations came out slightly after Colors, I think. And, yeah, uh, Sonic Mania was made by a different team. And it is great, but, yeah, I, I, just Sonic Team themselves would be doing a, a remake of Sonic Adventure if they ever did that, I'd imagine. And, yeah, I don't know if they're up to it nowadays. Then again, you know, at this point, especially now after the Sonic movies come out, you know, anything's possible. Like, if Sega was smart, they would capitalize on this hype big time. You know, besides, like, what they're doing with the mm -hmm. movies and stuff. Because ever since that movie dropped, a lot of people have been proved very wrong, e even myself included. I thought that movie was going to suck. Like, really. I thought it was going to be terrible. You <laughs> know, and I walked out surprisingly satisfied and happy about it in some ways. You know, that would be an interesting turn of events if that comes to pass in the next few years. But that leads me to another thing that I think we should touch on. When is it a bad idea to remake or remaster a game? Because there are very few instances where I could think of that that was, like, a terrible idea. <laughs> Um, I'm not really sure, man. Uh, I I guess there are some games that don't need to be remade that are already great. Like I, I remember there was a rumor like late last year from a not entirely reputable insider, but it got kind of picked up by a lot of sites nonetheless. Uh, there's someone claiming that Nintendo is going to remake Super Metroid. And uh, I wouldn't like that. I, I really don't like the idea of remaking Super Metroid because in, that, in my eyes, and it's the same for Metroid Fusion as well, those games are timeless. The, the, the art is incredible. The gameplay is perfect. The, the puzzles and the structure, everything about that those two games are, is wonderful and you don't need to remake them. And I feel like... If you remade them and you did like 2.5D like you did with, uh, with a it would just Thomas make Jones. it worse. Yeah. Yeah. It, it would just make it worse. I like the, the sprite-based graphics, the 2D art. I feel like 
you would not improve you could not improve upon super metroid at all so i feel like it's a lost cause to remake that and uh uh i, I would don't i don't think i'd be down for that if sega if sega if nintendo wanted <laughs> to do that you know something it's funny you say that because i not only i feel the opposite of that you know in some ways but i think it comes down also to personal preference with that type of thing that's why it's so hard to answer because i i hear that and i totally get that because there's certain games that you feel like if they were good the first time around like there's no need to go back and remake them like i feel like a little bit that could be applied to something like the halo master chief collection when they did that to halo one and two or halo two anniversary like that like i could totally mm-hmm. understand the argument and that perspective from there but then when you mentioned super metroid like someone like me i would love to see that you know give revitalized artwork have the same gameplay mechanics maybe have a little bit of extra content thrown in there i look at it in the same way as like look what they did with the original super mario brothers to me the original super mario brothers is as close as possible that you could possibly get to a perfect game in like a lot of different ways and look at that how that got reimagined and revitalized or remade in the super mario all-stars where we got like new artwork we got like a bunch of like little like little extra little easter eggs or little nods here and there but it was still essentially the same game and that spirit that we loved i mean you could also say the same thing about more recent releases like grandia or grandia hd you know because that's a remake of grandia mm-hmm. 1 and 2 and stuff it, i think it's very complicated and i think it's also a case-by-case basis for a lot of people sure. it comes down to personal preference and stuff like i think that certain games that are like more modern like within like the playstation 3 to playstation 4 era you know with xbox 360 xbox one as well respectively those are the types of like games right now at this moment in time that i feel like should not get remade or shouldn't have like the the perks of getting a re-release you know like an hd release yeah. a lot because that's we see a lot of that now with ps4 and xbox one correct yeah, yeah. Well, you you're saying it's a case by case basis, and you're you're totally right. Why I say that I don't want Super Metroid, I think a big part of that is because I just want something new from Metroid. And I know they're doing Metroid Prime Four, but we've waited a good like nearly twenty years for them to do a sequel to Metroid Fusion. And if you've not played Metroid Fusion through, like it ends on a really interesting note where the story it seems like it's going to go to a really interesting place and then Nintendo just never followed up on it. So I feel like every time they do a new 2D game and it's not a sequel to Fusion, it's not Metroid 5 or 6 or whatever it would be, uh, that kind of annoys me because I just want a, uh, a Metroid 2D game made by a core Nintendo team led by Sakamoto that continues that story. I don't want another Mercury Steam Metroid. I certainly don't want Fusion or Super Remade. I, I just don't think there's very much to improve. and this, uh, so, so I don't think there's much artistically to be mined from remaking those games. Uh, but yeah, I think a big part of it is down to, in that instance... We've not had a brand new, totally brand new 2D game in such a long time. And we did have Samus Returns, but I think even... Yeah, yeah, that was a remake. And I think even an argument could be made that that's like uh, worse than the original. I know some people do prefer the original one on the Game Boy. And yeah, I I like them both, but whatever. You, You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because one, I always thought that the Metroid Prime games were a continuation of it because I know there was some compatibility between, I think it was Metroid Prime 2 and Metroid Fusion. Where you get like the fusion suit and stuff like the, there was like some sort of compatibility between the two. Yeah, like it was, and it was the, it was the first Metroid Prime and, okay. uh, and Metroid Fusion because they came out, I think in the same year. Yeah. Um, I remember they would market glo- it like that. There, there was like a thing on magazines yeah. where seeing that, like, where that those two games could communicate in some way. But it, but it's also funny that you mentioned that because it, it's just that where you know some people prefer the original over like the remakes and stuff. And I think that's a very valid argument for a lot of people, especially for specific big titles that were very popular that did a lot for whatever time that they came out in and stuff. And again, I use the same example: Super Mario Brothers. You know, a game that was close to as close as perfect could be at the time that just gets remade and reimagined. 
a different way. I mean, you know one thing I do want to see, though, which would be great, especially for building up that hype and excitement for that series again? Seeing more compilations of those games put together. Like, I'm surprised, like, for Metroid specifically, there's no bundle that has Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Zero Mission together, you know, the original Metroid on NES, you know, all in, like, one bundle. Kind of like what they did with the Castlevania collection, or kind of like what they did with the Contra collection. Stuff like that, I think, is really cool, and I think more of those types of things should be done for certain series. Like, where's the Donkey Kong Country one? Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's certain, <laughs> there's certain ones I feel like would work like that. Am I wrong here? Yeah, sure. I think it all just comes down to the fact that Nintendo re-releases these on, like, every console, and they want to sell them individually because I think they have a certain perception of what their games are worth, and they think their games are worth more than certain other games of that age. Like, I think if if other companies released a Super Nintendo game today, like, as is, just a ROM, which is what Nintendo does. Uh, they'd sell it for dirt cheap, but Nintendo seems to think that a lot of their older games have a, a higher value. And that's why, you know, the virtual console was relatively expensive when that was a thing. And you can't even buy the games now. You either have to buy a Super Nintendo Mini or whatever, or you have to sign up to the online subscription. So yeah, yeah. So it's all to do with how Nintendo perceives the worth of their own games. True, true. Very, very true. Who knows? Here's hoping within the next year or so we get some more surprises. And hell, I'll even take a Nintendo 64 Mini. I'm just saying. Like, I know there was some <laughs> goofy rumors about that not too long ago. There were just rumors and stuff. But I'm just saying, Nintendo, you got my money. I'm just putting it out there. Mm -hmm. But well, I, do think, I do think that they played around with the idea of doing that a while ago and acquired some emulation stuff to do that. But it never came to fruition for whatever reason and maybe they just put it on the back burner nintendo does that sometimes where True. they have something nearly ready and they'll just kind of shelve it for a while and you know let it sit there agreed who knows I, I want that to happen though but either way liam thank you so much for sharing up with me on this episode definitive discussion it's a pleasure when uh, where can everybody find you right now where can everybody see what you're doing um well i do videos on did you know gaming which uh, is pretty easy to find I, I do a series called game history secrets where they're all my original stories to do with video game history i write about console games and yeah i just uncover secrets about game history that you might not know and i you know i have i have uh, stories about game development that i found inter i find interesting and i share them in that series but also i'm on twitter i'm doctor underscore cupcakes the full word doctor for underscore the record, cupcake. for the record this is like the funniest twitter handle i've ever seen like every time i read it <laughs> i know this is gonna sound rude but every time i read it i always think it's like you're like a little like cartoon villain like doctor cupcakes <laughs> like it just it just makes me laugh every time i read it i know it should but it, but it's good great. it's amazing Good. It's not. I don't take myself too seriously. It's just. Uh, I don't know. I got that when I was pr pretty much signing up to Twitter like years <laughs> ago, and it, it just. Uh, I just never changed it. So never. Changed I guess it. That's, uh, that's an amazing. Yeah, and, yeah. And once you get verified, you you can't change it ever. So even if like I'm a little bit embarrassed about it now and having to explain it to people. I don't have the option to change it, so oh well. I'll tell you right now, you could make a killer on Halloween coming up with a costume to match it with that handle. <laughs> oh my god. That'd be amazing for like packs or something. Oh my god. We're gonna make this work. <laughs> but Liam, thank you again so much for coming up in here on and chatting it up with me. Guys, show him some love. Go send him some owl hugs on Twitter if you guys can. And as always, let me know if you guys enjoyed this episode. Me and Liam are gonna talk a little bit more on EX Mode momentarily, which you guys could check out over on my Patreon page. Remember, dollar level or higher, you're gonna get that episode and a whole bunch of other exclusive content. There's links down below in the description box. But for now, we will talk to all of you guys again very soon. Peace out and stay epic, everybody.